Hey everyone, it's Joanne Molinaro, the Korean vegan, and today I thought I'd make this delicious cabbage and potato pasta. It's actually inspired by a traditional recipe called pizzaccheri, which is endemic to the Lombardy region of Italy. I learned about this dish after watching another episode of Stanley Tucci's Searching for Italy. I know I should just veganize every recipe in that show. But this is a story time video, guys. You can find the recipe link in the description below. So in one of my earlier story time videos, I told you about the time that my mom encountered a psychic on Lakeshore Drive, which literally happens to be the street on which I now live. I thought I'd take a few minutes to tell you about my own encounter with a psychic. A couple years ago, a girlfriend and I basically binge watched an entire season of The Seatbelt Psychic in one night. Afterwards, we Google stalked him, found out where he lived, and more importantly, how to get a private psychic reading from him. It was expensive, and it would be over the phone, but you know what it's like. It's like 3 in the morning, you've just watched this man read every single person that came into the back seat of his car, and you're absolutely certain that this has to happen. So I clicked yes, and I scheduled a session with him. I took some basic precautions when I registered for the session. I used an alias, I used an email address that I basically never use and create for spam only, and I used a phone number that wasn't my personal cell phone or home line. For months before this psychic reading, I knew that the person I wanted to hear from the most was Robert, my late father-in-law. For those of you who've watched my marathon video, you know that Robert was incredibly instrumental in inspiring me to run a full marathon, and that I'd always wondered if he'd seen me actually cross the finish line from wherever he is. So you can imagine my astonishment when the very first words out of the psychic's mouth were, Who's Robert? All of a sudden, I hear the name Robert, Robert, Robert. He asked me who Robert was, and I did tell him that Robert was my father-in-law, but I didn't tell him that he'd passed away. Thomas John then explained that when the spirits come through, they often say a name, though it doesn't necessarily mean that's who they are. But then he went on to say, but I think this is him. I think the person coming through is Robert. He went on to say that you must have known this guy. Thomas said he felt like Robert had a lot of love for you, very positive for you, which was important because at this point I never told Thomas John that Robert and I had known each other before he'd passed away. The reading went on for about 45 minutes and a lot of different energies came through, including um, probably my grandmother's, uh, even Anthony's grandmother. She referred to herself as Nona, and I definitely did not have anyone in my life who referred to herself as Nona. My grandmother came through to take credit for the book that I was writing, all the recipes in it, as well as my good genes. Thomas John predicted that my book would do incredibly well and that a lot would come from it. He also mentioned that he'd seen that my life had taken a big turn for the better and that my health had significantly improved over the years. He said he could see a small white dog, a female dog, one that had recently passed away, and I can only imagine he was speaking about my Daisy, who had just died. With about a minute left, he went back to Robert, and he said that he wanted everyone to know that he was doing okay, and that he was fine, and that nobody should worry. He also said that he had a great life, but would have liked more time. He described himself and Anthony, his son, my husband, as peas in a pod. And then out of nowhere, Thomas John asked, did you guys go to concerts together? I thought about that one time our families both went to watch Anthony play at Ravinia together. And I also thought about the time that Robert was in the hospital right before he died. He was so sick, but Anthony was giving a concert at a local cathedral. And unfortunately, Robert couldn't attend. I remember Robert saying very clearly to Anthony, 
I want my concert. And so we found a piano in the middle of the hospital wing, and Anthony played for his dad one last time. And I remember thinking and asking myself how I had fallen into this space, this moment that was so impossibly beautiful and perfect. So when Thomas John asked me if I'd ever been to concerts with Robert, I said yes. And Thomas John said, he's telling me he never missed a concert. Anyways, guys, I'm still not sure what to believe, but I like to believe that Robert is out there somewhere sending us his love. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future Korean vegan videos. Have a lovely day.